As only three countries have bombers, the Chinese fleet represents the world's second most potent aerial strike force, possessing nearly 250 bombers. China successfully extended the range of H-6's bombers with a number of variants from the H-6J anti-ship missile carrier to the new H-6N with hypersonic missiles. To provoke the US and test its superpower, the Chinese Air Force recently started an invasion toward Taiwan with upgraded H-6 bombers. As we know, the H-6s are slow and vulnerable targets against advanced US bomber fleets. So would it be enough for a hundred H-6 bombers to punch through an American flat tops defense and prove Chinese intercontinental power? Or does Beijing need to hurry up with developing a new stealth bomber that will carry nuclear weapons as far as 7,500 miles? Let's start with the news that the Chinese Air Force recently offered the world a preview of its war plans by sending eight H-6s with a reunifying mission in Taiwan. When officials in Beijing use the term reunification, they're really talking about war, as adding Taiwan to the Chinese mainland is the central goal of China's foreign policy. Tension increased with instant U.S. response and a rock-solid commitment to maintaining peace within the region. The same day, the U.S. Navy sailed the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt with escorts into the South China Sea, and the timing wasn't a coincidence. Roosevelt's battle group includes Carrier Air Wing 11 with around 70 airplanes and helicopters, a cruiser, and two destroyers. A nuclear-powered attack submarine usually also accompanies American aircraft carriers. Against this force, the Chinese military mustered eight H-6K bombers, four J-16 fighter jets, and a Y-8 patrol plane. It's not a violation of Taiwan's sovereignty for China to probe the air defense zone, but it is provocative especially when the probing force includes eight bombers. There are nearly 250 H-6s in the People's Liberation Army Navy Air Force Service. It's safe to assume many of them would take part in any air war over Taiwan, which would probably involve strikes on U.S. bases in the region. However, it won't be enough to handle the U.S. carrier fleet. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union deployed missile-armed Tupolev bombers such as the Tu-95 Tu-16 and Tu-22M specifically for attacks on U.S. Navy carriers. In response, U.S. F-14 Tomcat fighters armed with long-range Phoenix air-to-air -air missiles battled all the Russian bombers before they could get closer than 400 miles to the carrier. Moscow expected heavy casualties. The Soviets have figured out that they would require two divisions, around 100 bombers in total, to fight a single carrier battle group. The Chinese H-6 and its YJ-12 anti-ship missile roughly are analogous to the Soviet bombers. If the Soviets needed to sortie 100 Tupolevs to have a shot at an American carrier back in the 1980s, today, the Chinese would probably need at least a double fleet of H-6s to do the same thing. Although the H-6 has gone through a complex series of upgrades since entering service in the 1960s, it's still outdated. The bomber was originally bought in the Soviet Union as Tu-16 and modernized to several variants, including the H-6J anti-ship missile carrier, the H-6K land attack missile carrier, and the new H-6N, which can be refueled in mid-air and carry hypersonic missiles. The aircraft's design has a solid built-in endurance concept that can haul almost 86,000 pounds of ordnance over enemy territory. This bomber is intended to attack priority targets and engage U.S. carrier battle groups. To be fair, the H-6 is smaller and less sophisticated than America's own bombers are. Most H-6s lack aerial refueling gear and thus suffer serious range limitations that aren't a problem for U.S. bombers, all of which are refuelable. H-6s with their lumps, bumps, and conventional materials are decidedly non-stealthy especially compared to the flying wing B-2 and B-21. So in Taiwanese wartime, obsolete H-6s can only be used in large quantities within two strategies. First, as a striking capacity to catch targets by surprise, or second, targeting Taiwanese bases and troops formations after it's safe, thus when air defenses have been eliminated or at least dramatically damaged. It's not the case for China to lose all of the H-6 fleet being defeated by the U.S. So here, the new H-20 bomber comes to solve the problem. 
the H-20 could perform the Vital Suppression of Enemy Air Defenses role, or SEAD, knocking down radars and missile units to give follow-on forces a better chance of surviving. SEED is one of the most important and most dangerous missions in all air combat. The H-20 clearly is a large flying wing in the class of the U.S. Air Force's B-2 and B-21 stealth bombers. Chinese media only recently began teasing audiences with hints of the bomber's outline, receiving feedback about stealing or copying U.S. weapons designs. There appears to be a fair amount of evidence, simply available to the naked eye, that H-20 has striking similarities with B-2, including the rounded upper fuselage, blended wing body, curved upper air inlets, and essentially no vertical structures. Some Chinese publications also argue that the H-20 will do double duty as a networked reconnaissance and command and control platform, similar to US F-35 stealth fighters. This would make sense, as China has developed a diverse arsenal of long-range air, ground, and sea-launched missiles, but doesn't necessarily have a robust reconnaissance network to form a kill chain queuing these missiles to distant targets. Theoretically, an H-20 could rove ahead, spying the position of opposing sea-based assets using a low probability of intercept AESA radar, and fuse that information to a firing platform hundreds or even thousands of miles away. The H-20 could also be used for electronic warfare or to deploy specialized directed energy. As mentioned, only three countries have both the imperative and the resources to develop huge strategic bombers that can strike targets globally, the United States, Russia, and China. Strategic bombers make sense for China because Beijing perceives dominance of the western half of the Pacific Ocean as essential for its security due to its history of maritime invasion and the challenge posed by the United States in particular. The H-20 is depicted as having a flying wing design that trades speed for range and stealth. One of the key technical goals of stealth is, among other things, to build an aircraft that can, while in flight, approximate the surrounding atmospheric temperature as closely as possible to remove any detectable margin of difference. Stealth bombers could allow the People Liberation Army to launch wave after wave of attacks, with each aircraft potentially delivering more ordnance than an entire PLARF missile brigade could, and doing so in a way that allows for greater tactical flexibility and precision. According to some sources, the H-20 will have a bomb load of 45 tons, far more than the B-52H Stratofortress's 35 tons and the B-2 Spirit's 20 tons. So the H-20 would need to be much larger than the four-engined B-2. The bomber will also have an impressive range of at least 7,500 miles. That would put Hawaii within reach of the H-20. This is because the H-20 is reportedly designed to strike targets beyond the second island ring from bases on mainland China, including US bases in Japan, Guam, the Philippines, etc. It would also put all 50 US states within striking distance if the H-20 took an Arctic flight route. Analysts forecast the H-20's first flight in the early 2020s, with production possibly beginning around 2025. If the H-20 is judged to be of credible design, the Pentagon, in turn, will have to factor in the strategic implications of China's stealth capabilities and will likely seek to field counter-stealth technologies. The H-20 concept is often confused with another of China's nebulous future aircraft, a supersonic regional-ranged bomber known as the JHXX. That's a totally separate bomber, but still worth highlighting. First seen in model form at air shows in 2013, the JHXX was reported to have an 80 to 100 ton takeoff weight and supersonic capabilities. The 30 meter long aircraft looks to have a main weapons bay under the central fuselage for carrying armaments like anti-ship missiles such as the YJ-12 and two weapons bays on either side of the fuselage that could carry air-to-air -air missiles like the PL-15 and PL-10. Its reported 1,500 mile combat radius would be enough to strike US carriers and even bases like Guam. The JHXX would have been most similar in mission profile to the Russian Tu-22M Backfire Bomber, 
another supersonic regional bomber designed to attack enemy aircraft carriers nearing the homeland. But unlike the Tu-22M, the JHXX could be armed with air-to-air -air missiles to fire back at enemy interceptors and missiles. Still, unlike the H-20, there has been no official mention of an aircraft with the JHXX's profile from either American or Chinese sources. Although Chinese H-6 bombers lack the range to reach the U.S. and can be easily destroyed by modern air defenses, China is developing a new H-20 bomber that could step in and assume the role relatively quickly. So that's all the time we have for today's video. Please give this video a like if you learned something new and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another video from Front Cost. See you next time.